Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Other Programming Using Scala. We've been talking about doing sorts and searches, and kind of as an aside topic, uh, it would be good to talk about how you can actually measure the performance of things. Now when we've talked about how these sorts and searches perform, we've talked about them in terms of this big O notation, which is just kind of a, a metric of how the number of operations changes with the input size. It's not actually directly related to speed. Uh, for one thing, if, you, if you're looking at the order of some operation that isn't the slowest operation, well, then it's definitely not indicative of speed. And the reason why we do this in computer science a lot of times is because, well, in some ways, the speed is going to be highly dependent upon the machine. Uh, you could almost argue from a theoretical standpoint, we don't care about the exact timing because every computer is going to run it differently. The exact timing is going to be different depending upon what else is happening on a machine and whatnot. But there are times when you really just want to see, okay, what's fastest on my machine right now? How do these things compare? And so in this video, I want to quickly show you how you can go about doing that. So let's go and look at our sorts. Um, we had a bubble sort, our min sort, and our insertion sort, and all of them were written to work on arrays of doubles. And we uh, you know, ran tests on them. What I would like to actually do now is make a big array. And how big is big? How about we go with 10,000 elements? Uh, we'll play with this if that's not quite big enough. And put make 10,000 random numbers. And then I want to time how long it takes to do bubble sort, min sort, insertion sort on those numbers. So how about we write, because I'm going to be du basically duplicating the same code multiple times, um, how about I define a function? Time sort. And what I want to pass into here is my array of doubles. I also want to pass into here the sort algorithm itself. And all of my sort algorithms have the, uh, their functions of the form array of double goes to unit. And what I want this to return to us is a double. And that double will be how many seconds it took to do the sort. Okay. And the idea here is that I want to do a print line of time sort on first big nums dot map x goes to x. That's kind of my lazy way of making a copy of this. Um, and bubble sort, paste that twice, the min sort, and the insertion sort. So what happens inside of here? Well, I want to time how long it takes to do this sort. So at some point inside of here I'm going to have, I'm going to call the sort on my array. Uh, I need to know the difference between before this line and after this line. So I'm going to make a variable called start and what I want to set it equal to is system.nanotime. Now system.nanotime is a call from the Java libraries. Uh, this system uh, is basically a, a class of things that are system-wide in Java. And nanotime gives you a measure of the time in nanoseconds. Uh, so one uh, 1 over 10 to the 9 seconds, or uh, 10 to the minus 9th of a second. And then at the end here, what I want to return is system.nanotime minus start, and I want to divide that by 1e9, or equivalently multiply by 1e minus 9. Okay. So this will give me the after the sort, the nano time minus the starting nano time, and then I divide here, or uh, multiply by the, the fractional value to get this value in seconds. Yep. 
if we run this, oh, oh I know what I did, forgot to do. I forgot to say fill. Okay, what happens if I do that again? So one of the things about sorts, uh, about time testing in general, not just for sorts, for anything on a, on a computer, you can't actually just run it once and say, oh, that's the answer, uh, because it turns out it's not. Um, there are, you have to run it multiple times, and you can kind of see we're getting a pattern here. Uh, this is a very confusing pattern to me. The because this is giving us the bubble sort and insertion sort are taking roughly that long, and the insertion sort is tiny by comparison. Now, if I add a zero to that, that might have gone too far. What happens? Well, I increase the size of the input by a factor of 10. Remember, these sorts are order n squared. So if I increase the size of the input by a factor of 10, the length of time that it's going to take to do this should go up by a factor of 100, which means that if these timing results were accurate, this is going to go from 0.32 seconds to 32 seconds, roughly. And this value, which had been around the 0 0.4, 0 0.5, is going to go up to 40 to 50 seconds. Um, and sure enough, yep, the bubble sort definitely seems to be putting in a performance of around 32 seconds. Uh, what about our selection sort? And I have to admit the fact that my selection sort, okay, that looks, that looks better to me. That's way too fast. Um, <laughs> my insertion sort is performing much better than that I expected it to. Insert uh, val ret equals ret, and just to make sure, test sort. Um, no, let's come up here. Test sorted. The better one was our test sorted too. test sorted to, which took an array. So A. Now I would understand the insertion sort being so much better, kind of, actually it would be much, much faster, if the array that I wound up passing it were sorted, but I continually um, I'm just going to print that out. I just want to verify that, that everything is happy here. Uh, you know what? I'm feeling impatient. Instead of going down, let's go to 20,000. So that's a factor of 2 over what we had originally. So instead of 0.32, it should take four times that long. Yep. Uh, and so these this is robust right here in the sense that the insertion sort is going remarkably fast and it is uh, giving me sorted results. I would definitely have to think about this for a little while. Um, as for why it is, it could actually have something to do with the nature of Scala and the for loops in here and the fact that I'm using a while loop in this. There are some details as far as the Scala performance goes. Um, but now you know how to actually do your, your time comparisons of things. Use system.nanotime and you know, put one call before you do whatever work you're doing and one call after it, and you'll be able to see how much time was, uh, was taken up in the interval. So that's it for this video, and we'll come back and we'll finish off the chapter by talking about bugs and the, uh, the way that memory works on machines.